this is concept e classes and today we'll deal with chapter 14 of class 8 science chemical effects of electric current so in this chapter we'll see what are good and poor conductors of electricity how do liquids conduct electricity the chemical effects of electric current and finally electroplating so first let's see what is electric current or what is electricity Electric current is a rate of flow of electric charge past a point or a region or in simple words we can say that electric current is a flow of charge. Now what do you mean by charge? Charges are usually carried by free flowing electrons. Hence we can say that electric current is the flow of electrons in any material. For example the lightning that we see in the sky or the power that lights a bulb these are all are due to electricity. Now let's see what are good conductors of electricity and bad conductors of electricity. The materials which allow electric current to pass through them are called as good conductors of electricity. For example, metals like silver, copper, gold, aluminium, zinc, steel, brass, etc. all are good conductors of electricity. And those materials which do not allow electric current to pass through them easily are poor conductors of electricity. For example, glass, rubber, cotton, paper, wood, etc. So how can we know or determine whether a substance can conduct electricity or not? By using a tester. A tester usually consists of an electric cell and a bulb and one terminal of the cell is connected to the terminal of the bulb and the other terminal of the cell and the bulb it has wires and they are brought together in contact with the material to be tested. So here if we attach the two wires to the metal part of the screwdriver the bulb will glow hence it is a good conductor but if we attach the wires to the plastic handle of the screwdriver the bulb will not go hence it is a poor conductor of electricity. So by using a tester we can determine whether a material allows electric current to pass through it or not. Now the first topic of this chapter is do all liquids conduct electricity. Just like solids, liquids also conduct electricity. A liquid which can conduct electricity is called as electrolyte. And in that conducting liquid or electrolyte, there are ions that is positively charged and negatively charged. And the flow of these ions conduct electricity through the liquid. Now, do all liquids conduct electricity? Let's see. So, how can we test whether a liquid allows electric current uh, to pass through it? Can we use the same tester? Yes, we could use but we should replace the cell by a battery and the rest all is the same. We have a bulb and it has two open wires and these open wires uh, in a solid state we usually connect it to the material that has to be tested but here in the liquid uh, state we have to dip the free ends of the tester inside the liquid. So in order to understand how liquid conduct electricity let's consider an activity. Here take any liquid, let it be lemon juice or vinegar inside a beaker and just as we saw how we can use a tester in the previous slide, we have to do the same apparatus and the free ends of the tester should be dipped inside the liquid. Now there should be sufficient distance between the two ends, it should not touch each other. What can be observed? Will the bulb glow? Yes, here the bulb will glow, hence the lemon juice or vinegar, they conduct electricity. So what happens here is that when the liquid between the two ends of the tester, it allows electric current to pass through them. Hence the circuit of the tester becomes complete. And then hence the current flows in the circuit and the bulb glows. That is only if a circuit is complete or closed, then only there will be a flow of electricity. And only if the electricity flows, the bulb will glow. What do you mean by closed circuit or a complete circuit? It means that there will be no break in between them. Whereas here we can see that there is a break between them, hence the electricity will not flow. So if the liquid is a good conductor of electricity, the circuit of the tester becomes complete and the current flows in the circuit and the bulb glows. But when the liquid does not allow the electric current to pass through them, the circuit of the tester is not complete and the bulb does not glow. Hence we can say that the liquid is a poor conductor. Now how does a bulb glow when an electric current passes through it? It is due to the heating effect of the current. The filament of the bulb, it gets heated due to high temperature and it starts glowing. In some situations, even though the liquid is conducting, the bulb may not glow. Do you know why? It is because the current through the circuit is too weak 
and the filament it does not get heated sufficiently and thus it does not glow so in such cases what should we do so in such cases we use led so even though the circuit of the tester may be complete yet the current may be too weak to make the bulb glow hence we replace the bulb with a led led glows even when a weak electric current flows through it and there are two wires called as leds attached to an led one led is slightly longer than the other so while connecting to a circuit the longer led is always connected to the positive terminal of the battery and the shorter led is connected to the negative terminal of the battery hence if the electric current is weak uh, in a circuit we could use led instead of a bulb now can we make another tester which can detect a weak current we can use another effect of electric current to make another kind of tester and that effect is the magnetic effect of electric current so to understand that let's take a simple example if we uh, keep a compass needle near a current with flowing wire we can see that even though the current is small there is a small deflection in the magnetic needle and this type of tester can also be used to detect weak current now let's see some uh, conductivities of liquids based on this type of tester so for this first we have to take a tray of matchbox and we have to wrap an electric wire over the tray then place a small compass needle inside it now connect uh, the free end of the wire to the terminal of the battery and leave the other end free take another piece of wire connect it to the another terminal and leave the other end free now take the two ends free ends and dip it inside the liquid now let's uh, dip the tester in different types of liquid first let's dip it inside lemon juice what can be observed as soon as we dip the tester inside the liquid if there is a deflection uh, in the magnetic needle it means that the liquid is a good conductor of electricity and if no deflection it means it is a poor conductor of electricity so when we dip the tester inside a lemon juice there is a deflection in the com compass needle hence we can say that lemon juice is a good conductor of electricity similar is the case of vinegar tap water but when we use vegetable oil there is no deflection hence it is a poor conductor of electricity in the case of milk there is a deflection in the compass needle hence it is a good conductor in honey there is no deflection hence it is a poor conductor of electricity so from this table we can say that some liquids are good conductors of electricity and some are poor conductors of electricity but under certain conditions most materials can conduct hence we can uh, preferably classify materials as good conductors and poor conductors instead of classifying them as conductors and insulators let us now test the conduction of electricity through water so in the previous activity we saw that tap water is a good conductor of electricity but distilled water is a poor conductor of electricity let's see why the water that we get from the sources such as taps hand uh, pumps wells and ponds are not pure it may contain several salts dissolved in it and small amount of mineral salts are also present inside this uh, water hence this water is a good conductor of electricity why because salts are actually uh, sodium and chloride ions are present inside that hence the flow of this ions results in the flow of electric current hence it is a good conductor of electricity on the other hand the distilled water is free of salts and thus it is a poor conductor of electricity so we found out that common salt when dissolved in distilled water it makes it a good conductor now let's see what are other substances which when dissolved in distilled water make it conducting so for that let's see an activity take three clean uh, plastic or rubber caps of bottles pour t tea teaspoon two teaspoon full of distilled water in each of them add a few drops of lemon juice or dilute hydrochloric acid in one cap and in the second cap add a few drops of base which is a caustic soda or potassium iodide and add a little sugar to the distilled water in the third cap and mix it well and now test which solutions conduct electricity and which do not and what results do you obtain so what can be obtained here in the case of hydrochloric acid uh, it it has ions hydrogen and chloride here in the case of potassium iodide also potassium and iodine there are also ions present in it hence in these two cases we can see that it conducts electricity whereas in the case of the sugar syrup here it do not conduct electricity hence in general we can say that most liquids that conduct electricity are solutions of acids bases and salts now when an electric current flows through a conducting solution does it produce any effect of the solution 
let's see so the next topic of this chapter is chemical effects of electric current this chemical effects can be observed only when electric current passes through liquids now what are chemical effects when an electric current passes through a conducting liquid it causes chemical reactions and the effects due to this chemical reactions are called as chemical effects of current for example bubbles of gas may be formed due to the chemical reaction deposits of metals may be seen on electrodes or a change of color of solution may occur now let's see an activity to understand more about the chemical effects of electric current so for this activity let's take two carbon rods from two discarded cells clean the metal caps with sandpaper and wrap copper wire around the metal caps of the carbon rod and join them with a battery now these two rods are called as electrodes what are electrodes electrodes is any type of solid through which electric current can pass now one rod is connected to the positive terminal of the battery and it gets positively charged and that electrode is called as anode now the other electrode is connected to the negative terminal of the battery and it is negatively charged and that negatively charged electrode is called as cathode now pour a cup full of water in a glass or a plastic bowl and add teaspoonful of salt or any few drops of lemon juice in order to make it more conductive now immerse the electrodes inside uh, this water this solution and make sure that the metal caps of the carbon rods are outside the water wait for 3 4 minutes observe the electrodes carefully what can be observed we can notice bubbles of gas formed on the electrodes deposits of metals may be seen on electrodes and changes of colors of solutions may occur so these reactions all these all reactions happen based on the solution and the electrodes which are used so these are some of the chemical effects of electric current in a textbook we have two three activities which show these chemical effects for example when electrodes are immersed in water oxygen bubbles are found in the positive terminal and hydrogen bubbles can be observed in the negative terminal so if you attach a tester to a potato sometimes we can see green blue color formed in the positive terminal so from all these we can understand that these are the chemical effects of electric current so the last topic of this chapter is electroplating so let's consider some real time examples if we scratch a shiny handlebar of a new bicycle we can see that the shiny coating comes off revealing a not so shiny surface beneath similarly with the repeated use of certain gold ornaments we can see that the gold coating wears off revealing silver or some other kinds of metal beneath so in both these cases a metal has a coating on another metal so the process of depositing a layer of any desired metal on another material by means of electricity is called as electroplating now how is this done so for that let's consider an activity so for this activity we need copper sulfate and two copper plates now take 250 ml of water inside a beaker and dissolve t tea, two teaspoons of copper sulfate in it now add a few drops of dilute sulfuric acid as well in order to make the copper sulfate solution more conducting now clean the copper plates dry them and connect the copper plates to the terminal of the battery now allow the current current to pass about 15 minutes now remove the electrodes from the solution and look at them what can be observed so we can observe that when an electric current is passed through the copper sulfate solution the copper sulfate dissociates into copper and sulfate see these are the ions copper and sulfate ions now the free copper ion it gets drawn to the electrode connected to the negative terminal of the battery and it gets deposited on the cathode now for the other electrode an equal amount of copper it gets dissolved in the solution hence the loss of copper from the solution it is restored and the process keeps on continuing this means that the copper gets transferred from one electrode to another so this is a process of electroplating that is it, we are uh, layering uh, any desired metal or depositing a layer of any desired metal on another material by means of electricity so electroplating is one of the most common applications of chemical effects of electric current and it is very useful so let's see some of the uses it's widely used in the industry for coating metal objects with a thin layer of different metal for example here we can see the gold plated watch the copper plated mug silver plated teapot silver plated goblet even chrome electroplated tap so 
in all these cases the layer of metal deposited has some desired property which the metal of the object lacks now let's see which all metals are used for electroplating chromium plating is done on objects such as car parts bath tubs kitchen gas burners bicycle handlers wheels etc so why do we use chromium plating because it gives a shiny appearance with and it does not corrode as well and it resists scratches now let's see another application of electroplating the jewelry makers they electroplate silver and gold on less expensive metals and these ornaments they have a appearance of silver and gold but they are much less expensive similarly tin cans which are used for storing foods they are made by electroplating tin on iron because tin is less reactive than iron thus the food does not come into contact with iron thereby protecting it, protecting it from getting spoiled similarly a coating of zinc is deposited on the iron which is used in bridges and automobiles to protect it from corrosion and the formation of rust so from all this we can say that electroplating is a very useful process so that's all for this chapter 14 chemical effects of electric current if you have any doubts or any queries message me in the comment section don't forget to share like and subscribe if you find the contents useful thank you so much may god bless you all take care and bye bye